Coming up on Valley News Live at 6, our team coverage of the winter storm continues with reporters bringing you the latest conditions live throughout the valley. Plus, this was the scene on 19th Avenue North in Fargo earlier today. A six-car pileup will show you what road conditions look like now. And the man wanted for a shooting in Cheyenne, North Dakota, makes his first court appearance. Valley News Live at 6 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 6. Good evening, everyone. From Fargo to Minneapolis, snowplow drivers are working around the clock to clean up after a winter storm brought wicked whipping winds and dumped several inches of snow. Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley rode along with West Fargo crews today as they cleaned up those blowing drifts while also feeling a little thankful that the brunt of this blizzard missed the metro this time. You can't see anything. It was bad Thursday morning. But Shane Hendricks has seen much worse in his eight years plowing for the city of West Fargo. It wasn't as bad as we expected. We didn't get that much snow, but there was still a lot of drifting. The whipping wind and blowing snow created the biggest headache in the southern part of the city as new developments and few trees leave a lot of wide open space for snow to blow. You could go down a street and Within a half hour, you come back and it's drifted again. Crews say this winter has been busier than the last, and they say that's because of the number of light snows we've seen that have been accompanied by crazy winds. The wind is always, is always an issue. Adding the biggest issue this year was the early snow and the fluctuating temperatures. This stuff falls pretty easy. If a plow still hasn't been down your road, Henrik says not to worry, as crews don't start on the rest of the city in storms like this until the winds die down. It's not really worth it until the drifting ends, you know, and the wind, and the wind drops down. Now, local tow truck companies tell me that this storm didn't keep them as busy this time either, especially when comparing to that storm we saw last week where dozens, if not hundreds of cars were stranded on I-29 and I-94. While one local tow truck driver tells me they did respond to a few crashes and rollovers throughout the county today. Uh, with roads being closed, with school closed, a lot of businesses closed, a lot of people weren't on the roads, which in turn means very few calls. Live in Fargo tonight, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Thank you, Bailey, for that live report. And now to the man who's been tracking and watching this storm for more than a week. That's First Alert Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hutch. Stacy, thanks so much. We wave goodbye to the blizzard warnings. Those are all now kaput as of 6 o'clock. We are enjoying a gorgeous setting sun. And if you had a chance to get out and see the sun dogs, so many of you sharing photos of that spectacular. A lot of lofted ice crystals in the atmosphere thanks to the wind and the snow and the dry crystally snow at that. As we are saying goodbye to this storm system, look at the waves of snow down south. Check out that drift out there. A little bit of snow down near the border. Things were definitely more intense with this one and some significant drifts there just north of the Gwinter area. Some snowfall totals down south here. We had nine to ten and a half inches from Victor and Sisseton into Browns Valley. Aberdeen at seven and a half. Hecla near the border at South Dakota, six and a half inches. Hoffman, well, Grant County picking up five inches. Not quite as much for Fargo, as we mentioned. Some drier air undercutting the system and also that wind blowing everything down to the south at the cutoff line. So this system is out of here, clearing skies, and now we turn our attention to how low we go. Visibility is improving as well. Still a little on the breezy side in our Red River Valley counties, but other than that, that wind's tapering off. Last hour, the zero degree line was a little closer to the valley and it's going to keep marching its way eastward now as cold air is taking hold. Wind chills already near 30 below zero here in the valley and even with light winds, our air temperatures are going way down tonight. And that means wind chill advisories for our area, wind chill warnings in a few spots that'll have some more significant wind. We're going to be very cold. Check out your thermometer here, expecting to see temperatures during the overnight hours to drop down to the 20s below for many spots. Wind chills approach 40 below by morning. So for bus riders and for older work goers, <laughs> make sure you're bundling <laughs> up. Your hour by hour forecast doesn't uh, show some improvement. We'll have details on that here in a minute. All right. Thanks, Slightly Hush. older. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Well, for the most up to date information, right at your fingertips, download the VNL News app and the VNL Weather app. You can watch video updates, the interactive radar, and get the hour by hour forecast where you live.
Well, snow drifts have piled up around vehicles and semis stranded at the Dakota Magic Casino in Hankinson since yesterday. Our news team got there ahead of the storm and they've been riding out the blizzard there along with hundreds of other travelers in the area. Let's check in now. Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie. She is live with the latest. Courtney. Justin, Stacy, as far as current conditions go, things are improving here significantly. The visibility is looking a lot better and we don't have a lot of that falling snow anymore. The bad news is that the wind is here and it is creating a little bit of blowing snow as well as those abiding cold temperatures. Now, things in the parking lot, though, they are moving. It, it is busy out here night and day from that. These semi trucks is the minute the interstate reopened. They've got places that they need to be. They have been gassing up and getting out there. We did take a look at the interstate for ourselves. We didn't go too far, but it looks like blowing snow is going to be the hazard there as well as the occasional scattered ice. You could be going, you know, getting up to speed and then you could hit some of the ice could make for some really dangerous conditions. Now, as far as the people that are still at the Dakota Magic Casino, it looks like the vans, the SUVs, a lot of them have big snow drifts up to my knees and height stuck behind their cars. So it might be a while before they can get out. And there is still that no travel advisory out there. So if you're going to be getting out, there is that risk with the blowing wind, the blowing snow, and as well as these cold temperatures. If you do get into a situation where you get stuck, it could be a minute till law enforcement get to you. And like I said, these temperatures are very dangerous. So again, if you don't have anywhere to be tonight, it's best to just stay put. We can keep you updated online and on the air as these conditions continue to improve. We're looking forward to it. For now, reporting live tonight in Hankinson, Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. All right, thank you, Courtney. In the Hankinson area and parts south of there in the South Dakota are among the hardest hit by this storm, but even they now are no longer in the no travel advised area. It's now just snow covered across most of southeastern North Dakota, even patchy snow in spots, and visibility is much better even into Minnesota, where I-94 has looked normal for most of the, the last couple days. There is one accident in Sauk Center right now, but the visibility has improved, so travel conditions are much better except for a far southwestern Minnesota where there is still no travel advised right now. Let's send things out now to Valley News Team's Aaron Walling. He has an update on conditions in Fergus Falls, kind of on the edge of where they got hit hard yesterday. Aaron. Well, Justin, I can tell you that most of the crews have already headed home. The snow had tapered off. The wind had, uh, had tapered off, and conditions have gotten a lot better. The sun came out, and it's night and day than when, when I talked to you guys last night. Last night, like I said, it was windy, snowy. You couldn't really see anything. But now those crews have finally got a handle on it. Right now, as you can tell behind me, the sidewalks are still a little bit covered, but that's just because they are on the low priority list. They mainly focused on emergency routes, and that was due to public works. They started around 2 a.m. this morning, and they were taking care of those roadways. A lot of these cars were out of the way, actually, when Davis and I came through. This area was like a ghost town. There was no lights. There was no cars, except for like one or two that were stuck in the snow. But with Minnesota Department of Transportation. I rode with them this morning and got an inside look of what they were taking care of. But one of the things that they were focusing on is that it's not just the wind and snow that they're concerned about. It's whenever they hit a snow drift and that snow pops up in the air, if a vehicle's to their right or to the left of them or behind, it's very hard and difficult for them to see as well for the drivers as well. Just because it's clear, there could be a snow drift that snow plow is going to hit up ahead of you. And I think we've seen it a couple different times out there where, you know, people go to pass and then that's when the operator hits a drift and it's a whiteout condition. Now, Ryan Smith said it best. When I rode in the vehicle with them, there was about three or four times where a vehicle was passing to our right where the driver, his name was Fidel Aguilar, when he would hit a snow drift, it would pop up in the air and that vehicle, you couldn't see it. And then, in fact, Davis was behind us, and there was times where it was five to six to even seven seconds where he had it on camera where that snow was still in the air and you couldn't see anything. So that's what the conditions that they are dealing with. And so they are asking people, please be safe and be, you know, be kind on the roadways, especially when you're out and about around the snowplows. Reporting live in downtown Fergus Falls, Aaron Walling, 
Valley News Live. All right, thanks Aaron for that live report. We have some breaking news just in. Fargo police need your help finding a missing girl. 13 year old Madeline Rose Sandstrom was last seen in the Fargo area on Monday. She's described as standing about five foot four, 130 pounds with brown hair and green eyes. And Fargo police are looking for a missing 19 year old. Makai Summers was last seen in North Fargo on Sunday. Family believes he may be in Grand Forks. He's described as five foot 10, 200 pounds, brown eyes, black hair. Anyone with information on either is asked to call police. A judge today set bail at $1.5 million cash for the man accused of shooting and killing another man in Cheyenne, North Dakota this week. Nicholas Poitra was the center of a three-day manhunt after the shooting at Rindy Cheyenne Bar on February 19th. He was arrested yesterday after being spotted by a local farmer. Poitra faces 11 felony charges in Eddy County, including murder, robbery, weapons violations, and seven counts of terrorizing. And a couple of Minnesota Eagles are doing the best they can to ride out this storm. Not thrilled about it, I don't think. Uh, Minnesota Department of Natural Resources says the rapidly falling snow could be seen falling on a lone bald eagle last night, shortly after sunrise this morning. Like many of us, it fully emerged from the snow, <laughs> as you see, worked its way around, cleared out its home. Uh, the Eagle Camp fans have been watching this one very closely since the eagle and the egg arrived February 15th, followed by a second egg about three days later. So good luck to those eagles. Uh, some Minnesota hockey moms also rode out the storm at the state hockey tournament that kicked off today. We'll have the latest on that still to come. And quite a lot of snow out in the Twin Cities. For us, the lofty amounts of snow were south of the FM area near the Dakota Magic Casino where the wind and the snow continue to blow right into our evening tonight. Things are changing. Now we turn our attention to cold and a few Friday flakes. The facts forthcoming. This is Valley News Live. Thanks for joining us on Valley News Live. Valley News Live weather app. Make sure you search VNL weather in the app store today. If you have it, you can get the latest on the uh, not only the radar, but road conditions, hour by hour forecasts. And as we turn our attention to the cold taking hold, we have some video forecasts on there of that for you. Now, take a look at your current conditions out at Hector. Seven below zero north northwest winds 16 miles per hour. That makes it feel like 29 below zero. Brutal cold out there and you can visually see how cold it is with the ice crystals here in the lower atmosphere and moments ago those sun dogs shining brightly. Here's a look at the clouds. Those are exiting off to the north. The rest of us down south enjoying that gorgeous sun dog sunset heading into the nighttime hours. Not much showing up on the radar except up north of International Falls. That's about it. Hey, the sub-zero air is slowly sliding eastward. Zero now for Bemidji, one below Thief River, six below in Grand Forks, seven below out in Jamestown and the cold air has made its way all the way into northern Oklahoma. Now the white line on Hutch's map, that's the freezing line, the 32 degree line. So cold air spilling in behind our storm system and it's being shared well down to the south. And now we do have wind chills to be concerned about many of us approaching 30 to 35 below already. The digits in pink are the wind chill values in white is what your car's thermometer will read for you. Notice the area of wind focused down there as we saw from our crew at the Dakota Magic Casino uh, from the Southern Valley and into parts of Southern and Central Minnesota. Uh, off to the east, we have 15 mile per hour winds. So that's gonna keep things a little icy on area roads. Take it slow, pack a survival kit. By 10 o'clock, we're already hitting the teens below. Now, a word about morning temperatures. I expect them to be in the 20s below for almost the entire area. We'll be close in a few spots to actual air temperatures near 30 below, say Nechi, Wahala, pretty good chance in Cavalier as well. Now also where we have the deeper piles of fresh uh, flaky snow, that fluffy stuff down south, I do think we're gonna see some 20s below in places like Wapaton, Hankinson and out towards Sisseton. Keep that in mind, a very frigid start, dangerous wind chills close to 40 below zero. Midday temperatures after the cancellation of all the blue you saw there, that was a wind chill advisory. We're going to stay cold throughout the day and temperatures will be well, snuggling neck next to the zero degree mark in many locations. It'll be wind chilly all day because these south winds pick up and with the south winds an increase in some clouds. Look at this by my kneecaps down here, a shot of snow where we got all the snow from our blizzard. We're gonna get just a taste of some more down there. There'll be a little wind driving at 15 to 25 miles per hour. So could be adding on to the slipperiness of area roads there. No significant accumulation from that under an inch for most. So your planning forecast in Fargo, the snow stays south. We start out brutal, 21 below. Temperatures march up to near zero, but we stay below for the day. South winds do increase late 
and will have a few gusts at times 15 to 25 miles per hour. Snapshot, 7 a.m., cold. Afternoon, frigid, with a high temperature in Fargo that will peak somewhere close to zero, but stay below it. Snow chances south. Improving temperatures by the close of the weekend. Another chance of some light snow Sunday. Monday, yep, we warm up to 30 wonderful degrees with some morning flakes. Better chance of a few more larger flakes, more widespread snow possibly on Wednesday. We'll keep you posted. And our expanded 11-day forecast showing temperatures near 30 a couple of times out as we head into the upcoming weekend ahead. I'm uh, going to be happy to wave goodbye to some of these temperatures and all of this. Yes. I think most people will. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Hutch. Yeah. Well, we know the snow isn't going to keep hockey moms away. Many traveling more than six hours to make it to the state tournament in the cities this weekend. We'll check in with them next. No two sets of eyes are the same. Tons of hockey parents, including some from Moorhead, War Road, and Fergus Falls, are braving the storm for this year's <laughs> Girls State Minnesota Hockey Tournament. Yeah, Gordon Severson stopped by the XL Energy Center in St. Paul to talk to some of them about the importance of being there to see their kids play. Of the eight hockey teams that are playing here in the girls' high school hockey tournament at the XL Energy Center, only two of them are close to the Twin Cities. The other teams, many of them had to travel several hours to get here today. But parents tell me that they wouldn't miss it for the world. Here we were prepared uh, for the worst. It wasn't the ice inside the XL Energy Center hockey parents were worried about. It was the ice outside. I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous. Yeah, no! Especially parents from Proctor Hermantown who played the first game of the tournament Wednesday morning and have to play again on Friday. That one might be a little bit dicey depending on how the weather goes. We're humble, we're the fans were few but mighty. Due to the storm, several teams had to cancel their fan buses. Hermantown I think had three and I think we had three two coming from Proctor. We wish that we had more people in the stands. Bob Madison with the high school league says all of the games are carrying on as planned because here at the X, on, they don't have a lot of wiggle room to reschedule. There's wild games on either side uh, of this tournament. The most important thing is the girls got to play. Rob Rader with Mankato East says weather is always an issue come tournament time, but what can you do? Not show up and not cheer on your kid? No, we were coming. <laughs> if we had to leave on Monday or, uh, or even over the weekend, we were going to get here. The team that actually had the furthest drive was War Road, with some of those parents having to drive nearly six hours to get here to St. Paul. But I'm told a lot of those parents actually came a day early to beat the storm, and many of them are going to stay a day or two longer to make sure it's clear before they go back home. Gordon Severson, Carol 11 News. And the number five ranked Moorhead Spuds take on the number four ranked Gentry Academy tonight. That game starts at eight. Our sports team is all over it. Number of airline passengers across the state, North Dakota, continue to rise. Uh, we'll show you what you can expect next time you travel. Ahead. Com. January was a good month for airline boardings at North Dakota's commercial airports. Statewide, there are about 91,000 passengers who flew out of the eight largest sites in the state. That's 24% more than last year. For the first time since the pandemic, boarding surpassed 2019's numbers. It's a possible sign the industry could reach a full recovery this year. Executive Director of North Dakota Aeronautics Commission said air service demand across the state is significantly stronger than one year ago. And some good news to share that missing girl we shared with you at the beginning of the newscast. Madeline Rose Sandstrom has been found. Coming up, we have some state hockey playoffs in North Dakota. Dakota highlights next. Eight of our boys hockey teams meeting in the Ralph Engelstad Arena to crown a new state champion. The puck dropping for the state title tournament this afternoon, starting with the top seed out of the east. The Red River Rough Riders making a much shorter trip to the arena than their opponents, the Jamestown Blue Jays. The East Region champs get the scoring started right off the opening faceoff. Just over 30 seconds into the game, Carson Scarperud takes the matters into his own hands, weaving through defenders, firing this one down low and into the back of the net. Red River off to an extremely early 1-0 lead. Later in the period, Luke Bedal snags it in the neutral zone. He's off to the races, dangles it in to light the lamp, 
doubling that Red River lead. Down to the final minute of the first period now, Badal passes back to Mikey Coleman. He's the leading scorer in the state for a reason, sniping this one in from a long way out. It's three to nothing Grand Forks at the end of the one. And the scoring is just going to keep coming. The Rough Riders advance to the semifinals with a seven nothing shutout over Jamestown. They scored at least seven goals in three of their past four postseason games. And to close out the top half of the bracket for this round, it's the Cheyenne Mustangs and Minot Magicians facing off. Neither team able to find the back of the net here as we approach the end of the first. First shots saved and fired right back by Hudson Routh. A diving save from Blaze Ostrom keeps the Mustangs off the board. Both teams held scoreless through the first two frames. Now it's on to the third. It's Routh with another scoring shot, but this one gets launched into the air and over the net. We are still looking for our first goal of the game with about two minutes to go. But we won't have to wait much longer. Less than 30 seconds left on the clock. Zach Moser fires a rebound shot past the goaltender. The Mustangs grab the lead with just 21 seconds left on the clock. One more empty net goal is going to seal this one. Cheyenne advances with a 2-0 win over the Magic Men from Minot. Now let's go over to Hutch for your last look at weather. All right, and what you need to know is that we have temperatures that are going to be very cold in the morning, but improving this weekend and the upcoming weekend looking pretty good. Our best chance of snow may very well be next Wednesday, the way things are looking right now. We have some light at the end of the tunnel. Indeed, yes. It's, it's going to take us a little time, but we'll get there. It's a long tunnel. It's off in the distance a bit, but it is. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just I, compared to what we, the <laughs> city fair. saw okay. with this I, last storm, right. most of us would be pretty happy. I won't complain. Shook out. This time. We got through today. Absolutely. <laughs> Next Have time. A good night. Night.